Hello and welcome to the Aardvark Spy Shop YouTube channel. Um, today I'm going to talk to you about how to use a bug detector uh, and specifically how to uh, use the Protect 1207 iBugging Detection device. It's one of the most advanced and practical technical surveillance countermeasures devices um, that I use. Um, traditionally a big problem that I had with TSCM devices was that there have always been so many different types of bugging devices out there and it's a very time consuming task to keep going over the same space with different specific detectors searching for tiny well hidden uh, often well disguised um, devices. Um, some embassies or consoles can be up to half a million square feet which is a pretty daunting task even if you've got a substantial team of operatives. Um, it's always imperative to be thorough when carrying out counter surveillance but that's not always easy when you have time constraints and that what is what makes this device so uh, so valuable. Um, it really grasped my attention. I first came across it at a, uh, uh, a conference, uh, a convention, sorry, in uh, Eastern Europe and uh, I'm very glad that I did come across it. I now actually sell these devices, so if you're looking to buy one, by all means contact me. I'm sure I'll um, give you a very competitive rate on them. And um, we also visit uh, consuls, embassies, uh, businesses in, in, in London and actually beyond um, to, to do their, their, their countermeasures um, surveillance. And it, it's such a good device because it packs everything in one little box look I'm holding it in my hand that's the size of it um, so it can scan six different um, and, and scan and display in real time on this little screen here um, six different um, methods of tra data transfer uh, GSM uh, 3G 4G CDMS uh, LTE, it, it's so um, quick and compact in the, in that regard that um, I mean I, I wouldn't consider doing a, a bug suite now without it. Um, as you can see, the device is handheld. You can fit it in your pocket. Um, it displays in real time. I'll switch it on in just a moment, and all the results come here on the faceplate, so you can see it straight away. Um, let me switch it on. And you will see slightly. If I can do it with my left hand, yes, it's on. Right, so there's the face plate. You can see that already it's picking up signals. Uh, in my office, it's very likely to pick up signals because, uh, for one, we have Wi Fi. I can see that's the, the big bar here coming up, but also uh, I, I sell listening devices and uh, tracking devices, etc., and they're all in my office, and so it would be sending out a lot of information that way. How you interpret this the, this information, I'll explain to you as uh, we, we, we move forwards now. Um, so it scans the environment and it picks up the these signals from the devices that are within the uh, immediate area that it's in, and uh, it tells you how strong and uh, the, the, I'll show you this little toggle here, what, what this can be used for in a moment, which helps you actually locate exactly where the, the, the devices are. Um, so it picks up six different uh, forms of, of data transmission and it shows you them on the, the, the faceplate here. Um, most of the end clients that I have, they're not really bothered about the uh, methods of transfer of data they just want to know like am i being monitored or not but if you're working in the private detective field it's very very valuable because for example here this one on the left that's lte uh, cdma so that i know is normally a camera okay it's uh, it's when data for for video is being sent so if i see that I know, right, I'm looking for a device, I know the device here, but I don't have to look under the table, I don't have to look behind the radiators. It cuts out about 60% of the looking time because I know, right, that, that, that's what it's telling me. It's a camera, or probably it's 90% certain that it's a camera. So I'll start looking for the usual places where a camera would be hidden. Um, you'll see this little uh, sort of joystick toggle thing down here on, on 
this side. Now, I can move it up or I can move it down. Uh, it's called an attenuator. And when the attenuator goes down, it gives you uh, a broader range uh, of, of signal. So it can search for much broader range. And I, I start off with it on, on the, the, the attenuator minus because that will tell me, is there a device here or not? Right, I find that there is a device. Then I can go to the attenuator plus button. So I just push that toggle up like that. And as you'll see, the the signal now is much fainter. But what that does is it means that by having it, first you have it low, so then it tells me there is, now I know there is a device here. As I move this device around, if I move the, the level uh, so it's less sensitive, then I move the device around in the area, and as it is closer, then it will light up again. So that helps me actually locate where any bugging device may be, where is it situated. Um, so let's go for a look around the office and uh, we will uh, look for any devices that just, okay, so obviously I, I sell devices, so I know there's a lot of devices in here. Uh, we've got uh, spy glasses, listening devices, trackers. Um, so I can come, I can put it here and we're going to be looking for a signal to come up. Now, obviously, most devices do not transfer data 24-7. Uh, for example, a tracker, uh, like a, a GSM, like a car tracker, will not be transmitting uh, permanently. So what will happen is, the uh, <laughs> I'll let you in on a secret. We have one here. Okay, so here is a, a device. And, but but this device is set to to transmit data. I think like once a minute or something like that. So when it starts to transmit the data, it will show it on this device. So what you'd need to do when you took the device with you is you would uh, situate it, such as I have here, and you just wait for it um, and wait and wait. And I mean, look, if I'm doing like a, for example, a bug sweep of a car, I will normally tell the client, listen, I need minimum two hour drive. Uh, you, you want to be driving because you want it to be normal conditions in, in the car um, when when it would pick up. There you go. Right, so now it's shot up. And what I would have done then, I'd go in the car, I'd put it first in the front of the car because that's the most likely place because people sit in the front, there's more noise if they're trying to record uh, voices, things like that, they're more likely to put it in the front. I'd situate in the front as soon as that light shot up, as it just did a moment ago. But then I know, okay, we 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 we're near what we're looking for here. Um, if it doesn't shoot up when I'm in the front, I just put it in the back because, okay, they they possible they can go in the back, but normally they they'd be in the front. Um, and sure enough, we find a, a tracking device. Uh, and again, the the lights all lit up there. Um, so whenever the, the device sends the message back to uh, wherever it's sending the, the, the message to, this picks it up and that's how you locate it, that's how you find it. And um, like I say, I, I found it to be an, an absolutely uh, uh, amazing addition to uh, the equipment that I already had and it saved me so much time and so much bother that I highly recommend it. And that's why I've made this video and that's why we began stocking it. I mean, we, we've now sold dozens of these and uh, it's a, a very, very, I highly recommend it. Um, so if you want one, you, you give me a, a call. Thanks for watching, guys. Please hit the subscribe and uh, send me a message. Uh, I, the, all the links are in the description. Thanks very much. Bye-bye.